it's saying blink 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 we're now moving the little numbers Good. and uh, just lean in towards each other a little while you're talking so you're a little more natural and kind of like that's cool. That's cool. No, no, that's cool. That's good. That's good. Right. Okay. Down. Just, just so you're a little more. Mm -hmm. All right. We're here this okay. afternoon. Okay. So we're rolling. We're here this afternoon with Priscilla Wolf, who has traveled all the way from to Harris, New Mexico, to Harris, New Mexico, to come share some of the stories that she has about some of the Native American interactions with what we would call today unidentified flying objects. And um, Priscilla is going to give us a lot of information that might help us to fill in some of the blanks. Oh, um, one of the stories that kind of triggered off uh, when uh, Arizona Phoenix uh, lights came out was um, over a thousand years ago, uh, the last tribe uh, that had been there in Phoenix now, Phoenix is built over this Indian tribe now, but there was legends of uh, star people coming to visit them, and uh, which Morningstar was the keeper of um, the weather dolls. They were given four crystal weather dolls that controlled the weather and they were able to move things, do things a lot better than we do. They were more like uh, things, te high technology things that they used at that time. But a lot of this came, my grandmother said, with uh, that they were not to share with other people, outsiders, they call them. Once you shared with outsiders, you lost your gift. They would take things away from you, and but that, and that's been the general Native American attitude towards most of these things is to keep it much more quiet, yes, and traditional as opposed to exposing it to the larger public. Yeah, and uh, when the weather dolls were brought, and a lot of the old Indian people ha uh, had seen them, they were either diamond. Well, the ones that came to Arizona were diamond shaped. Some of them were they were totally closed in the bottom, some of them, some of them were not, they were diamond shaped, then, which they had five lights going up, you know, the main lights going up. They never touched ground, they would uh, stand up, coming down, and then they would flash down like a cloud, and the cloud formation would make stairways to where their people would come out. And so the, you're talking about the actual objects that you that yeah, reported seeing? Yeah, and uh, it would open, but comparing to the legend stories, the middle was filled, but we were not able to see it. Okay. And that's where doors would open, it, it was not visible to the human eye. And uh, doors would open and the star people would come out. The star people looked like us. Uh, there were some of them were very beautiful, blonde, blue eyes, uh, dressed very, very highly. And like, this, this is about over a thousand years. Uh huh. Ago. Yes. And this is the Hokum tribe. Yeah, the Hokum tribe. And this and, would be located in Arizona. Yeah, they came to Arizona. They were they came to the old tribe, the legend, and there was many buildings that they built that were and they had a, like ceremony places they built. And so, are there any ruins left that, that we can visit? A lot of the, when they were digging up the land, uh, I don't think so because my brother, when they seen the Phoenix lights, he got hold of me and he said, this is a connection to the old tribe. Right. The, the reason they're coming back, because they were promised the Indian people they would come back. Mm -hmm. uh, it might take them a thousand years, but they would come back. The, um, the object that you drew for me when you sent me the letter with the picture of the, of the weather dolls, it looked just like the boomerang UFOs that were seen in, in Phoenix and also that I saw on March 12, 1997 in, in Norfolk, Virginia. Do you think that, um, that these are the same things? Yes. Is, is that? Because they were promised they would come back. And their timing is not like our timing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we probably, are, a year to them would be probably a day to them. That's what it says in the, yeah. in the, in the, in the Bible. It yeah. Says that. Uh, so their timing's different than our time. Okay. Well, that would make sense. So a lot of things that, but they were, they brought the weather dolls down and to, because they were living in the desert. Mm -hmm. So they had four dolls that controlled the seasons, the weather from rain, and whenever she went and put in 
one of the dolls in the altar. The dolls were not very big. Uh, they're bigger on my artwork. <laughs> but uh, uh, they would put them like in a platform that where she would pray to them. Do you think that they were made from different crystals? Some yes. Different... The, uh, the yellow ones were all yellow crystal, the blue ones, blue crystal, white crystal. And then, I, I've noticed a lot when I participated in ceremonies that there was always the orientation of the ceremony to the cardinal points of north, south, east, and west. Yes. Is, did, 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 might that have had a play? the part in, in the positioning and yes, the number they, of... Yes, they did. And uh, so if the weather was really dry, they had a way with those crystal dolls to make it rain, to make it more livable than and, today. And did, did it help? Were, was it just the crystal dolls or did you, they also perform ceremonies like dances like Guillermo and... and they they had ceremonies that they had been taught, but they were very private. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they were a lot of these ceremonies were very private. A lot of them that I've been to are very private. Sure. And, but, but if you notice, uh, a lot of the Indian ceremonies, even the circles, uh, like one is uh, like the UFO I seen when I was younger too, where it had 18 lights in between the big lights around. Mm -hmm. It had 18 lights all around. And uh, it, it's a lot like the round ones that have been seen, then the fire in the middle. So the Indian people use that circle, then the stones, then 18 stones. I don't know if you're familiar with we that. We had seen that in Joshua Tree, the positioning of the stones by Guillermo was very important. I yeah. was wondering if there was a significance to that. Well, that's uh, the yellow usually is uh, that they use for flying. It's more of a way to open doors mm -hmm. to other worlds, gates to other worlds, we call them. Well, Joshua Tree was definitely that. <laughs> yeah, it was gates to other worlds. Yeah. But, uh, uh, every one of them controlled something. So it but, affected the... Yeah, but uh, eventually they said they would come back. Uh, and uh, so a lot of the people I talked to said in the year 2012. But my grandmother, who was a seer, claimed that before I would die, I would get to see a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be in my 60s, and I am in my 60s now. So, but they would start coming back. And... Who, 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 did you, who did you say might suggest that they be back in 2012? A lot of the old Indian people, we had some uh, Indian friends that were from Mexico mm -hmm. that claimed they would come back. And uh, I used to go to a lot of ceremonies because my grandmother was an uh, Apache medicine woman, a seer. But my grandmother was one of them that actually you'd put a tub of water and she put her hand over that and it would show up. Like a screen, like watching TV. Oh, wow, that's interesting. You know that Nostradamus uses yeah. the, a very, sounds like the exact same kind of technique. Yeah, and it, I don't know the prayer she said because I've never learned the Apache, but she would go into singing, then wave her hand over, and and picture would come out. And she predicted my whole life till the day I would die, and actually people I would meet, she would say that eventually I would walk among the many. And, uh, but... She always said to be careful, not to become, be careful of the government people, and I never could understand that. So, she said, uh, you know, they, you, they have ways you could disappear. Hmm. So, <laughs> for many, many years I did not talk. Sure. Until Chris came out with that book and I told him, uh, I'm from the valley. Hmm. I said, uh, uh, I could tell you things that you wouldn't believe. And the valley in this case is... San Luis Valley, Colorado. S San Luis Apisto? San Luis Valley. San Luis, okay. Uh, next to Alamosa. Right. But I, I so talked to them about Los mm -hmm. Salsas where they claimed there was gates to other worlds where we've seen a lot of UFOs come in, disappear, come out. Right. Well, it, I mean, it, totally. Just fly near and just disappear like in thin air. That's one of the theories that we have with the Norfolk incident in the Phoenix areas is that they appear to be areas where there's and the some gate. kind of gate. Yeah, that yeah. It's just it's the only way that you can kind of explain the enormous amount of sightings that occur in those areas. The what? The enormous amount of sightings that occur in those areas. Oh, okay. I thought you said areas. <laughs> no. No, um, uh, Marcus Tarhim, who I met, said he, he was from the planet of Mars that we, he called it areas. Right, right, right. And he said they had been attacked by the black planet people that took a lot of their people as slaves. Did and they say what the black planet was? That's an area? Uh, 
they were uh, strong soldiers, like warriors, mm -hmm. but they take over planets. But my grandmother talked also about the black planet and there's chips coming to the earth that killed the dinosaurs and froze giants mm -hmm. in time. But, you know, so then I found out that back in some other country they talk about the same thing I talked about. It's just a similar, yeah. You know. Similar narration of the stories. I, I can think of um, a couple of different stories that, that will correlate with I that. had never heard them, you know, but when I went out to Storytel, uh, you know, Grandmother would talk about this um, birds that would come from the sky, colorful birds, she called them, but mm -hmm. we were talking Spanish because I couldn't understand right. Apache. So she would say they would come from the sky and they were beautiful sky birds. Hmm. And out of their stomachs would open and out of them came the star people. And she said they would land on water, the mountains, on, but anywhere. But if they landed and land uh, pretty close to land, they would leave a round circle. Mm -hmm. They would burn to the world. Nothing would ever grow. That's exactly the way yeah. that we would describe a UFO event today. Yeah, and uh, so... Of course, of course, back then, no one had the terminology or the... Everything would be associated with nature. But uh, what was interesting, a lot of them came and they were teachers to our people. Mm -hmm. Way back, grandmother said that they would come back before white people came. And they were already white looking, blonde, blue eyes, white. And uh, so they would come and teach them. Then the sky bird would come back at a certain period of time, maybe years later. And they would all stand in this circle in the middle and they would be taken up. Wow. And uh, so... But she talked about them and that they could totally move stones, do things that takes us a lot of... It's, I'm a builder. Mm -hmm. I, I have my own construction company. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that from the monuments that I've seen, the Great Pyramids, etc., etc., I mean, some of these things represent an amount of effort that is just unfathomable. With equipment that we have today, let alone two, three, four thousand years ago, it's just... It, it defies explanation, and I, and I, I don't care what any archaeologist says. It, it, I, I do it on a daily basis, and it's, it's a feat that but it's, is it's difficult to explain yeah. in any way. But if you notice, Indian people used to travel a uh, distance, and we go in cars now. Yeah. And they were barefoot, I mean, walking, and they could cover a distance. That was unbelievable. I've heard about that. I, I, I think Guillermo mentioned something about and that. Maybe they something did. about time dilation? Or... Like my grandfather, he would leave and he called the, the gates to other worlds, but he said, uh, he didn't want me to try it because he said, uh, uh, you're too much like the human beings. Your you know? grandfather told you this? Yeah. And, uh, now, now, we know your mom was a, My a grandmother Apache. was Apache. Okay. And my grandfather was from Spain. Okay. But he was a, a believer. When I spotted my first UFO at the age of four, being raised Catholic and Indian, it was really hard. Of course, you read about that about me. Well, I have my and, own. And uh, it was like, okay, if you believe your Catholic ways, then you just didn't talk about those things. Those things were from hell. Sandy's hell. You know, and they were the devil's things that Sandy's created hell. things. But my grandmother's ways were a lot easier for me because it explained things, right. things that I seen and things that I could do, you know. I had a very similar experience. I grew up in Roman Catholic South Boston and when I was five years old my cousin and I went to play in the train tracks and he uh, fell down on a third rail and was electrocuted and died and I freaked out and prayed to Mary and Jesus and uh, Mary in particular and um, I, uh, we had no recollection of what happened for three days. We, we, for three days, everything was fine. And then my uncle went to wash my, my cousin's hand. Uh, it, it, he thought it was dirt on his pinky finger, and he couldn't get it off. They took him to the hospital and found out that he had somehow electrocuted himself and wow. then amputate the finger. And they called me in when I was five years old. Now, I had no recollection of this. This is uh -huh. stuff that came to me that I began to remember in flashbacks after my UFO experience, okay? And, sh and I realized um, over time that as a part of what we're talking about here with the UFO experience was that what I thought was the Virgin Mary, okay, was really the UFO. 
In other words, and this is interesting because in Fatima, there's a new book that just came out. I don't know if you've, you've heard about it yet. but they've just, I heard about it, but I haven't ordered it. <laughs> they've released some documents that, uh, I think it's called the Third Secret or something along those yeah. lines. But basically, what happened was the Vatican released all of these documents to, I believe it was an anthropologist from Portugal. And what they discovered was that the, the events that were attributed to the Virgin Mary were more likely or, or fit the category of a UFO event in 1917, which is witnessed by 70,000 people called the Miracle of the Sun, which was on October 13th. And um, so when you, when you talk about things like that, it seems like there's a common thread that yeah. these beings are, are not just um, for any one particular tribe, but it seems like they're working through many different networks to reach people. Oh, yeah. You know, from different religious backgrounds and, and belief systems. I know when I seen my first one, I was four years old, and I was at the window playing, looking east, and it was early in the morning. My mom and my grandmother were all in the kitchen having coffee. My, we lived in the farm. My grandfather was feeding the horses. And I seen this light, but I couldn't figure where it was coming from, mm -hmm. that the light was different than our light. And I stayed watching it, and all of a sudden it was, uh, it was like silver, but like a bowl, mm -hmm. just floating up there. It was not very big. And this guy came out, and he had a, what you would call like the astronauts now. Later on I got to see it, right. the astronaut of it, but the silver. And, but he had this rod with a circle like a Egyptian style. Right. He's checking the land at our ranch. For a long time, nothing grew there. It was a round circle burnt. And then he noticed I was looking at him. He lifted the rod, and a flash of light like thunder went through and went straight to my face. Was and this in New Mexico? In Colorado. Colorado, okay. And I run into the kitchen, and I, being raised Catholic, the first thing I was saw was a talker since I was little. I went in and told my grandmother and all I had just seen the devil. Mm. And uh, my grandfather seen it out there, and he came in the house. And he asked me to go outside. Uh, my Indian name's uh, Little Butterfly. So he asked me, Palomita, come over here. I'm going to show you what you've seen. You've seen from another world. Do you, I, I, we're in this hotel in New Mexico, and we see all of these, uh, um, not Hulkum, but um, uh, what's the word? Car? Kachina. Kachina dolls. Oh, the Kachina dolls. Yeah. Was it something similar to that? No. Uh, this was so different, I don't know. Uh, people say, well, you've probably seen a little alien. No, it, it was, he had a mask. He was all silver all the way down. But he wasn't very tall. But, uh... And do you think he was the same as the, as, as, as the, um... The other one? Star, yeah. From, from okay, I feel like he was a star person because a few days later, I woke up and I told grandmother, uh, our neighbor's little girl died, and uh, they put her in a wood coffin next to the wood stove. And the no. two ladies are coming down five miles from the house, walking, crying. And she said, go to bed. How could you see that? And I said, I see. Mm -hmm. That's when I started seeing the dead. You know, I actually could see through people. After this encounter yeah. with... Yeah, and uh, I could just uh, close my eyes and x-ray people, which I do at the ceremonies. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve gets to see me that. And uh, I'll close my eyes and I don't touch you. I'll just go around and I actually can pinpoint where your illness is coming from or it's it, it has opened a door to come into your body. And uh, since then I've been able to see things like that. But I see the dead, I talk to them. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I see them just in dreams, sometimes just like me and you. Sit.